Welcome to COBOL Tutorials. In several videos, we've addressed steps for creating meeting records and a variety of related records to customize your event. In this video, we'll look at the process from the customer's perspective so you can see how all the components work together. We'll start at the home screen of the portal and from the events tab, you can see either the event on the calendar where you can filter either by tags or event type or you can look for the meeting in upcoming meetings, where you can also filter by date or tags. If there are only a few meetings, customers may not find it necessary to use the filters. But if you have a lot of classes, events, and meetings going on, the filters can help save your customers time. To demonstrate, I'll select the month of the event I'm looking for, and you'll see the results narrow. Without logging in, anyone can see the description and location, which will pull from the fields completed in Dynamics 365. If nothing is entered, nothing will display in the tab. If you have meeting activities, the Schedule tab also displays to show the various activities available as part of the meeting. This tab will not display if no activities are created or set to display on the portal. In order to register, you must log in, so we'll click the button to do so. Once I enter my credentials, I'm redirected back to the meeting page where I see applicable registration fees and now have the option to register. Note that if I didn't meet any of the fee queries or a fee was missing or the registration window was closed, I would see a message letting me know registration is unavailable. If I allow group or proxy registration, the first page asks if this will be a group registration, a proxy one, or a single registration. I'll select group for this demonstration. Even if I'm only eligible for one fee, the process directs me to select the fee. If there are multiple fees, I'll select from those options here. The system will then direct me to the custom form page or pages if I've included them on the registration fee. The information must be completed for all required questions to proceed, and the validation messages will appear if you fail to respond. Then, if applicable, you have the option to add guest registrations. For demonstration purposes, we'll add one. If a form is required for guests, it will come up, but otherwise you'll get the default name information requests since guests are not necessarily contacts in CRM. Once you've registered, any applicable meeting activities that require RSVP will display for your selection. Customers can continue without selecting an activity, but for this demonstration, we'll check the box to add it to ourselves and our guest. Note that the meeting activity name is a link, and so customers can click to see details about the meeting and speakers, if applicable, without canceling the registration process. If a form is required for the activity, those questions will appear on the next page. If not, you're redirected to the meeting registration summary where the details about your registration and activity registrations, as well as an itemized order summary are available for review. If the meeting allows multiple attendees, you'll then have the option on the next page to add additional registrants by clicking the Add Attendee button. The process will ask you to provide contact details to help locate a contact in CRM. If your contact appears, you can select the record and proceed through the steps you've already seen for the new person. If the person does not already exist in CRM, you could select Add New Attendee, and the system will collect some basic information to create the contact record in CRM, and then you can proceed with the registration. But for demonstration purposes, we'll go back to the summary grid. The grid will show the cost and list of all attendees. Once everyone is added, then click Submit Registration. A final summary of all costs will display. We'll click Complete Registration. The system will request credit card details for customers to complete and then display a final summary with a full list of charges and attendees.
This is the last opportunity to cancel the process before the credit card is charged. Once payment is submitted, the registration record is generated in CRM related to the selected contacts. A receipt is generated on the portal. If I return to the meeting page on the portal, I can see that the system says I'm registered, but if I have left the edit deadline date on the meeting record in the future or null, then the edit button appears. The edit allows you to cancel or make changes to the activity selections until the dates for editing pass or activity registration dates expire. This gives you a look at how the setup done on the CRM side appears to customers on the portal. Thank you for joining us for Cobalt Tutorials.